I go over all the black lines in my drawing with an ebony pencil or another pencil with really, really soft graphite. So any place that I see a dark line, I very, very, very carefully will go over it with my ebony pencil. It's hard to see where you've gone over, but sometimes I'll hold it up against the light and you can see the little bit of a reflection. And you go over every single line, being careful not to miss any with the ebony pencil. This step is a little repetitive, but trust me, you're going to be so thankful that you did this when you get to the next step. Once you've gone over it with the ebony pencil, check it, triple check it, double check it, spin it in the light to make sure you went over every single line with the ebony pencil. It'll make your life a lot easier. Okay. Now the next step is to get your printing block. I'm using an Easy Carve, Easy Cut Linoleum. I have my name on the side of it. Very important. That way you can use both sides of these Easy Carve, Easy Cut blocks. And sometimes there's a little dust or powder on the blocks. Um, that's just so they don't stick together during shipping. So I always kind of give that a quick wipe. You can use paper towel. Um, I already kind of clean mine off. And then we're going to use our drawing that we did covered up with the ebony pencil. And we're gonna use it to our advantage. You know how sometimes when you're drawing with pencil, you get all the pencil on the side of your hand? We're going to use that to help us transfer this image to the block. And it's so easy. You're going to be shocked that you've never done this before. So very carefully, I flip my ebony graphite drawing over and I do this just very simply by holding it in place. You can clip it, you can tape it, but I find that's easiest if you just hold it in place very, very, very carefully. Okay, here I go. I'm gonna use an ebony pencil or a regular pencil. I'm gonna hold my drawing in place face down on my block and I'm gonna use the side of the pencil and very, very, very carefully without ripping the pencil, I'm gonna go back and forth. And I'm being very careful not to move the paper. So my other hand is holding it in place. I can't let the paper move. And I'm using the side of the pencil. I'm not straight up and down, not poking a hole in it. Almost laying the pencil down, I'm pushing and coloring over every inch of the back of the paper. And uh-oh, I'm getting close to my hand, so I'm gonna move my hand carefully but not let the paper move. Don't take your hand off the paper. You can even go the other direction just in case. And I can kind of see through a little bit where my design is. Go over the whole thing very, very, very carefully. When you're all done with that step, if everything's gone really well and you didn't let the paper move and you pushed really hard, when you lift the paper, the graphite from the front of your drawing should have transferred onto your printing block. It'll be very, very light, but at least you don't have to redraw it. You can if you want to, and sometimes I do that, but a lot of printmakers use that transfer technique to get their design in paper the way they want it first, and then they transfer it to the printing block. But notice it is going to be the mirror image of your original design. graphite is really light and difficult to see the next thing that I do is I use a permanent marker like a sharpie and I very 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 carefully start to go over all of my original lines that are very light 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 lightly drawn go over them so they don't smudge they don't move and I can see them a lot better plus we're going to be washing this block off at different points and it'll be a lot easier to see what we're doing if we don't wash all of our graphite off. There we go. I've completely covered my design on the block with Sharpie marker on top of the graphite. Now I'm ready to think about the next. Things are about to get really complicated and tricky with a three color reduction print. Actually, we're gonna have four colors. We're gonna have the color of the paper. We're gonna have the black outline that we've just created on the block. But for this print, we're also going to be choosing one area to do with warm colors and another area to do with cool colors. 
So before things get really complicated, I'm going to choose one warm color and I chose yellow and one cool color and I chose my light purple for the border and for my seeds of my sunflower and I color them in on my original drawing paper. This is just my drawing paper that I started with. So before it gets really complicated, choose one warm color and one cool color. And I know this seems very, very simplistic, but you'll thank me later. You can also incorporate into your design a lot of these empty white negative spaces. I say white because that'll be the color of the paper that you're using, but if you use a different color paper, it would affect it. But incorporate some negative spaces as well into your design. Now before I start carving, there's so many different spaces in here. And with the reduction print, you want to stay really, really, really planned out. So in order to help me, because I'm a visual person, I go by color, I'm going to take a permanent marker, make sure it's permanent so it doesn't wash off, and I'm going to color my block using the same colors that I colored on my planning paper drawing of my print that I'm going to do. So for the petals, I want to use a yellow. So I'm going to go ahead, and it's going to be a little bit weird on the chalky surface, but just enough so I can kind of remember where I want to put certain colors, I'm going to start coloring inside my petals so I know that they're going to be yellow. And then when I'm all done coloring inside my petals, I'm going to switch and I'm going to grab my purple permanent marker and I'm going to start to color in any place that I want to keep the purple so I don't forget. Okay, the inside seeds are going to be purple. Oh yeah, okay, that's right. The border is going to be purple. And I want to go ahead and color code my block as well. Okay, now it's time to carve. After you've color coded your block, the first area that we're going to be carving away will be the negative space. So in this case, it's anything that I didn't color on my block. So it's going to be the background, my negative space background, and any little areas between the petals there. Yours will be different, but any color that you want to leave, the paper color, your background space, we're going to carve out first. To apply the ink to the black that I just carved. I carved the negative space. Make sure to get all the worms off. Make sure it's nice and clean. I have my ink set up here. I'll show you guys how to do all this later. And I'm going to start to roll my ink very carefully onto my block. And it's going to cover up all of my surfaces. I'm starting with my warm color. Make sure it's coated nice and evenly. So the first print you make is always your practice print or your artist proof. And if you look closely, you can see there's a bunch of places where I thought I carved, but I missed a few spots. So I always go back in after my first one and I'll really carefully carve out those areas that I missed. You keep making your warm print over and 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 over again. I do it at least 10 times because I know I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes along the way with my next ones. I also use the same color ink over and over again so I don't have to constantly wash my block and my bench hook off if I can do all my prints in one setting. That's also a really helpful hint. So at least 10 warm prints. Now I've washed and dried my bench hook, and I'm using the same bench hook, and my printing block. And you can see there's traces of stain from the ink, but it's dry, it's washed, and now I'm ready for my next step of carving. Now I'm going to be carving out the warm areas. So any place 
where I have colored in my yellow Sharpie, I'm going to be carving out now. This is going to take me a long time because I have to very, very, very carefully carve around and leave the black lines. So I'm just taking out the yellow inside of my petals. to mix up your cool color and I've chosen a nice purple and I mixed it up and I am now going to apply the purple over my block which I've carved away the negative space printed all of my warm colors then I carved away the yellow warm inside the petals it's gonna look like I'm totally covering everything up but that's the craziness of a reduction print And you're constantly checking to see, did I add too much ink, not enough ink? Print making is problem solving on the fly. And now we have the cool color layer complete. Remember, make a lot of prints. The next step will be to carve out anything with cool colors. So for me, it's the inside of my sunflower all these little seeds it's hard to tell now because everything's stained with ink but these are my original cool color that i use the purple sharpie to color in so i'm going to be carving out the insides of my cool colors next i'm going to leave the black outline roll black ink over top of your print that you've just carved the cool colors and the warm colors out of. One of the things I love about this is the amazing different line weights you get. You can do a practice print, artist proof, if you're not sure how this will look when it's printed before you go over your warm and cool prints that you already have. Let's see how it turns out. 